Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm happy uh, to, to meet you today in BIM Harambe for uh, this year. Uh, I hope in the next few minutes we can uh, share some uh, exciting information uh, about BIM and how uh, it can help in developing uh, smart cities and smart communities. My name is uh, Hisham Ghafar. Uh, I'm, I'm leading the uh, uh, AEC Architecture Engineering Construction Solutions uh, in uh, Quality Standards for Information Technology, or QSIT. QSIT look, uh, is located in uh, Egypt, Cairo, Egypt. Uh, and uh, it's founded uh, in 1994. Uh, QSIT is providing uh, engineering solutions and software solutions for multiple sectors. One of them is uh, the AAC sector. Uh, we are uh, ESRI partner and an Autodesk Golden partner. Today, we will talk uh, about BIMGIS Digital Twin for uh, City Information Modeling. Uh, our, our today's agenda is uh, how Digital Twin uh, started. Uh, so we will uh, take a look uh, uh, for the history of the Digital Twin. Uh, what is uh, the, the challenge or, or what are the challenges that uh, our industry uh, faces nowadays that led uh, us to uh, think about developing the digital twin solution. Uh, then we will move to the, the details of the digital twin solution and its components or its tiers uh, that uh, will help in building uh, a, a digital twin system. Uh, then uh, we will talk uh, about the digital twin technology enablers. What, is, what are the technologies that uh, can make us able to develop a digital twin? Uh, and uh, in, the, in the, uh, the end, we will talk about how the digital twin can be uh, beneficial for uh, city information modeling or city information management. Uh, as an uh, AEC professional, you may uh, have heard about uh, the digital twin in, uh, in recent years. And I wondered, uh, is, uh, is this a way of uh, saying BIM? Uh, or it's, is it uh, another name for the building information modeling? Uh, what uh, uh, am I getting uh, out of it? Uh, in the next uh, few minutes, we will uh, break down uh, the digital twin code uh, at an intermediate uh, level of detail to uh, avoid becoming uh, another uh, advertisement for the digital twin and to provide some information about the implementation without getting too tangled in the details. Uh, we will try to keep it uh, intermediate level, not so detailed, not so high level. Uh, actually, uh, the, uh, yeah, the first uh, one that uh, we know who mentioned the digital uh, twin concept uh, was uh, David Gliners. Uh, David, uh, David Gliners' uh, uh, book uh, that was released in 1991, uh, its name was Mirror Worlds or uh, this long name, which is the day software puts the uh, universe in a showbox, how it will happen and what it uh, will uh, mean. Uh, this book uh, described the concept of digital twins. Uh, on another hand, uh, Michael Greaves of Florida Institute of Technology uh, is widely acknowledged as the inventor of the digital twin concept in manufacturing, 
uh, in both in the, uh, industry and academic publications. And when we, min when we mention that, uh, I might uh, create some ambiguity uh, as there is no uh, currently, uh, there is uh, currently no connection to the AAC industry uh, to understand why the digital twin has gained the popularity among uh, AAC professionals, we must first define the current industry challenges that prompted its development. The challenges that face uh, the, uh, the AAC industry uh, is uh, the first one is there is a massive amount of data uh, to be managed like drawings, equipment information, inspection, uh, workforce uh, data, uh, workers data, and uh, moreover. Uh, another thing that facility managers require a mechanism to keep an eye on complicated constructions to function properly. Facility managers need a system or a way to uh, manage their complex structures in an efficient and a simple way. Uh, when also when uh, dealing with very sensitive situations uh, like risk situations, fire situations, the decision making process might be extremely lengthy. It, because uh, it uh, when it, it, the decision maker. Uh, does not have uh, a, a rapid communication with with the incident that happened in the real world. Uh, it might take some time uh, to uh, to have an information about the incident that happened. Then uh, it might the information might be not accurate, so it might take some time to uh, not some time, long time to uh, take. A, a suitable decision to uh, avoid or to control the damage. The digital twin solution. As we see, uh, the digital twin in, uh, in this picture, we are uh, uh, illustrating a, a sample from the uh, industry that have the first appearance for the digital twin, which, which is manufacturing. Uh, the concept of the digital twin is composed of three distinct components. Uh, number one is the physical product. Two the is the digital uh, or vir virtual product, which is uh, a 3D model that represent the uh, actual uh, entity or the physical product. Uh, and also it includes all of its data or all of its information, not just like uh, a maquette or uh, like some uh, 3D model. No, when we are talking about the digital virtual product, we're talking about 3, 3D model and also contains the non-graphical information. Uh, and the third, uh, uh, concept is uh, the connection between the first two products. The link between the actual or the physical product and the uh, digital or the virtual product. Uh, the maintenance uh, of power generation uh, equipment such as turbines, uh, jet engines, and locomotives is an example of how digital twins uh, are used to uh, optimizing machines. Uh, so you have a 3D model for the machine and it can be used to determine the status of uh, the physical object, the real world object, allowing for the projection of physical objects into a uh, digital world. Sensors collect data from the machine and uh, can be used 
to continuously update a digital twin or a digital shadow or a digital copy of the device's state. So, how can this solution be effective for AAC? Maybe some of, uh, of you started to think uh, how, it, how it can be used in, in our industry. Now we uh, will start to get uh, into this topic. The digital twin for AEC, uh, by mapping the digital twins uh, original principles or original concepts uh, we mentioned, uh, we by mapping these principles to the AEC, we can see the physical product is the structure and the, dig the digital product uh, is the model, the model uh, of the structure and the connection between the uh, the structure which is the physical model and the digital the the digit, uh, the, uh, the physical uh, product and the digital product which is is the model uh, this link is the internet of things sensors or iot sensors uh, which serve as the link be, uh, the link between the two. We'll talk more about the IoT and how uh, it can help. Okay. The digital twin tiers. How can we develop a digital twin system? What uh, are the main components of the digital twin system? I think it might give us some insights about uh, uh, how can we use uh, our uh, current technology and our capabilities to build such a system. In my perspective, I see uh, AEC digital twin systems uh, should be based on three main tiers. Uh, the first one, we will uh, start from the bottom. Uh, this tier uh, represents the link between the physical entity and its digital representation to achieve the digital twin. It is necessary to uh, rapidly update the structures uh, or its elements state uh, as it serves as a mirror for the real world entity. Data collection can be accomplished through the use of mobile devices uh, carried by field workers or through the use of IoT sensors uh, or maybe PLCs uh, like in the SCADA systems. If uh, we have uh, dealt before with uh, PLCs or uh, SCADA systems. Uh, in 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 the in the pursuit of real time communication, we can use the IoT sensors or the or uh, PLCs, which is hardware that collect the data from the the real uh, entity and send us a notification or a feed that uh, rapidly update the uh, the state and mirror the state of the uh, real uh, world entity. Also, mobile devices is effective, but it's not real time. It might help in uh, uh, providing a picture uh, for the decision maker uh, about what is happening, what's going on in the, in the site, but it's, it won't be as rapid as sensors and PLCs. I think it's, uh, it's based on the case we are dealing with. Uh, like uh, what is the, the type of data we are collecting. In this case, we can decide we, we will use uh, mobile devices or we will need some hardware for a, a real-time communication. But when, when we are talking about digital twin, we need a, a mirror. So whenever something happens in the, in the site, in the physical, uh, uh, entity, it 
will appear uh, uh, instant uh, to the digital copy. It's digital copy. It's a mirror. Uh, the second tier, uh, actually, it, it is the second tier in, in, in this uh, diagram, but in implementation, it will be the first thing that we uh, should start with, which is the data tier. The data tier, uh, in general, uh, when we think uh, of data tiers, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is the traditional tabular data. Due to the unique characteristics of our industry, we are obliged to use visualized models uh, to simulate the, relation, uh, the, the relations between the elements. So uh, it's not just RD, BMS, or relational database management systems. It's just a tabular data or some tables that is related to each other. No, we, we need uh, a, a digital representation, a graphical representation for the model called the nature of uh, our uh, industry, a special nature of our uh, industry. So. BIM and GIS connect the models to their associated data. They create the graphical visualization and they have or include the data that is behind this graphical information. So, so the model have its shape like the real world entity and also have the non-graphical data. This uh, results in a context-aware model in which uh, each element contains its associated data. Uh, we were going to elaborate more in uh, the next section when we talk about the technology, the, the, the digital twin technology enablers or the, the digital twin enablers. Uh, then, uh, we can now move to the data processing tier. As we all know, garbage in, garbage out applies to any information system. Uh, if, if we uh, have a, an accurate input, we will have an unreasonable output. This is what we mean about the famous quote of garbage in, garbage out. Accurate data enables the provision of meaning, meaning, meaningful KPIs and insights. So in the data processing tier or the data manipulation tier or the data using tier, we may have some dashboard or uh, some screen that uh, provide uh, some KPIs and the insights to know what's going on in the real world entity. Of course, it will be updated using the data acquisition tier and the IoT sensors. Uh, the data can be used for a, a variety of different types of analysis that uh, can be applied uh, to the data uh, to, to utilize it more, uh, including uh, cost analysis, environmental analysis, and spatial analysis. Additionally, the, dat the data can be uh, used as uh, input for machine learning algorithms that can be used for a variety uh, of purposes, such as predictive maintenance. Now we will talk about the digital twin techno technology enablers. And of course, we are in uh, a BIM uh, conference. Uh, that we should talk in the first is the BIM technology and the BIM process that is the foundation or a, a main component uh, or a main technology enabler for the uh, digital twin uh, systems. The BIM or the building information modeling uh, creates a three dimensional model of all structure elements whether sub, sub superstructure or infrastructure. BIM models uh, inclu uh, includes or uh, in incorporate uh, time, cost, and the elements relationship to its surroundings. Uh, 
by by this uh, we mean uh, that uh, BIM build uh, uh, or uh, has a predefined rules that control the relation between the elements and each other. Like you can't create uh, a window or a door in uh, in a floor. Uh, it must be in a wall. Uh, in 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 some models, uh, when we when you use uh, when you move the floor and it is joined or connected with the wall, you will see that the wall is uh, moving with uh, with the, the uh, with the floor. Uh, that's what we mean by the relation rules that is uh, predefined in the BIM uh, systems. You can uh, read more about this if you uh, if you read uh, about parametric modeling, which is the, the base or the first picture of uh, building uh, information modeling, but it's more generic than BIM. BIM is a sp a specific for uh, architecture and engineering, engineering and construction, uh, but parametric modeling can uh, uh, cover also uh, another topics like manufacturing. Uh, okay, uh, back to our topic. Uh, the data that is covered in the BIM can be incredibly beneficial during the data processing uh, stage. Uh, additionally, a BIM as a process aims to produce an accurate as built model back to our uh, quote garbage in garbage out now bim as a process if we follow the the, the process standard uh, it will uh, help us to produce an accurate as built a model that represent the real world status of the building uh, an accurate as built model uh, can uh, enable uh, facility managers and owners to make the most uh, of the digital twin system by accurately replicating the real world structure. Now you have an exact element and an accurate, uh, an, an, an accurate copy of the real uh, world structure. This can be used up apart in the data tier. So when you start the, the process of uh, data acquisition, it will really uh, reflect the real updates. So uh, BIM or building information modeling uh, provide a 3D uh, graphical representation associated with uh, its properties and, uh, and information. It, of course, it is for superstructure, infrastructure. It is associated with the uh, non-graphical data. So beside the 3D, strong 3D visualization capabilities of BIM, it, it has the uh, capability to do uh, time simulation, cost estimation, which is can be considered as a type of data uh, processing or data analysis. And of course, clash detection. Uh, and this comes from the uh, predefined rules we mentioned. The second technology enabler is GIS. GIS or Geospatial Information System or Geographic Information System uh, enhances the solution spatial uh, spatial intelligence. GIS digital maps represent actual world features in their precise geographic locations. Uh, each feature is associated with a database record containing all of its of its associated data. The uh, allowing uh, by allowing uh, the, the user uh, to define data entry rules. GIS ensures the integrity uh, of tabular data. Uh, 
Uh, additionally, it enables you to define ge geometrical relationships. Uh, like we have mentioned in, uh, in BIM, but BIM is, is uh, or BIM focuses on uh, the AAC, but GIS can uh, be used in multiple industries. So here we do, we, we do not have a predefined rules. Uh, the, the rules uh, is uh, made by the user or the modeler. So GIS enables us to define the geomet geometrical relationships between elements regardless uh, of their connect uh, connectivity rules. Uh, if we are talking about pipeline networks or topology rules, topology rules like uh, uh, two buildings cannot intersect. It's non-logical. So you you decide as a modeler or the uh, a model cre creator or a map creator, you decide which rules you want to be applied on the uh, on the model. The uh, this uh, topology rules or the connectivity rules uh, warn the uh, modeler against uh, creating uh, features in the forbidden locations. So GIS is a, a layer-based uh, uh, view that is uh, focusing on reflecting the real world entities, but in uh, an image of, uh, or in, uh, uh, a copy of, contains of uh, layers. Each layer contains uh, a number of features that have uh, a common uh, properties like uh, a layer for parcels, a, a layer for streets, a layer for elevation, uh, and, uh, and another things. Uh, each feature or each element in the map represents or associated associated with a record in the database. So every layer uh, is visualizing the data and the features in its accurate geographic locations. And each feature has a record in the table that contains all its information. So JS provide accurate locations, tabular data integrity, it, like uh, you can create a, a combo box to uh, to enforce the uh, data entry, uh, not not to uh, enter a, 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 a wrong uh, value or like a, a, you you can define a certain range between two numbers. Uh, connectivity rules like every every uh, pipeline needs to have a sink and a source. When, whenever uh, the modeler forgot to uh, make uh, one of them, the, the system won uh, or pop a message. And topology rules, like we mentioned, two, uh, two uh, buildings cannot intersect uh, or ca cannot overlay, uh, two buildings cannot overlay, two streets cannot intersect and uh, so, okay, now uh, we talked about BIM as a technology enabler, a digital twin enabler, GIS as a digital twin enabler, but uh, we have this debate since years uh, and a lot of papers that uh, discussed the difficulty of BIM and GIS integration. Now it's possible and it, it, uh, it already uh, been used in uh, multiple projects. BIM and GIS now are like a one data repository, are like one system. The BIM and GIS now connected. So the planning data, that is uh, created in the GIS system can be uh, used uh, as input 
to the design phase uh, in the BIM environment, then in uh, it can, uh, of course, it can we can move to the build or the const construction phase. Then you we can reflect what what happened in the planning and the planning changes to uh, to have the, an accurate as built model in the BIM, of course, and also it will be saved back to the GIS system to be ready for the operation and the maintenance process so it's an end to end solution starting from planning and ending uh, in uh, operation uh, the requirement for a uh, gis uh, and bim integration came as a result of the initiative to make the most innovative uh, infrastructure design and construction approach possible when it comes to uh, creating uh, smart communities and smart cities. To accomplish this, uh, geospatial companies must make decisions, plan, and do everything uh, else much more intel in intelligently than uh, ever before. The most effective method of accomplish accomplish accomplishing this is by connecting and integrating GIS and BIM. Such uh, integrated systems are the foundation of future evolution, are the foundation of the digital twinning. The evolution could include the most advanced infrastructure for smart cities. Here is a simple video that can uh, give us insights about the BIM and GIS uh, integration and how it uh, it uh, it really uh, can be achieved uh, with the new technology Okay, so we all know that when it comes to engineering and GIS teams working together in harmony, things could be a bit better. Even the simple task of giving and receiving data can be a challenge. For example, here's something that doesn't always happen, but certainly could happen to you as an engineer. You submit a request to get the GIS data you need. You get that data, but now you have to verify that you have the right data and that it covers the proper area of interest for your project. But if you realize you need more and different types of data, you have to start all over again. Then once you have the right data, you're relying on static information to assess impacts to design alternatives. And given how much time and effort it took just to get the right data in the first place, you hesitate to ask for anything else that could help you make better inform decisions. Meanwhile, teams have updated the GIS data with validated information from the field, and now there are discrepancies between the data you have and what's actually on the ground, resulting in the need for a new file to be sent to the team. Now, no one knows which file is the most current file, so you lose more time waiting to get the right file, or you and your project team might end up using inaccurate and out-of-date GIS data, leading to increased risk of errors during the design process. And then you're like, there has to be a better way! Well, there is. Together, Autodesk and Esri are working to integrate BIM and GIS processes, enabling a more seamless flow of data between engineering and GIS teams. Now, designers and engineers will have access to the latest up-to-date data needed to make better informed and more accurate design decisions. Updates to GIS data from the field can be seamlessly incorporated into designs, saving precious time. And, as GIS feature designs are changed, GIS records can be kept up-to-date more easily, enhancing productivity for all. Integrating BIM and GIS enables more connected workflows, allowing GIS and engineering teams to work better together to deliver more resilient and sustainable infrastructure. In other words, things are about to get a whole lot better. Uh, is well known, uh, BIM represents more than uh, the BIM model. 
BIM models are just a product or a result of the BIM process. Additionally, GIS is, uh, is not a sim a simply a dynamic map. GIS is capable of integrating with a, a, a variety of other systems. So the BIM and GIS integration, it's since forever, it's not something new, but it was on the process level, as, as we see uh, in, in the video. We need, BIM needs data from the GIS, the GIS needs data from BIM to, uh, to create a, a, a whole solution, but it was not connected enough. And Digital Twin is about connection and real-time connection. How can we create the Digital Twin in, for our industry uh, and uh, the main two actors uh, in the in our industry cannot connect with each other in an efficient way but now they are like a one system they can connect and update each other whenever uh, an update happens in one of them uh, back uh, to the to gis gis uh, spatial analysis uh, assists in defining the optimal site location. Uh, it helps us to answer the question, uh, where is the best location for, uh, for something? It, it's, a, it's a question we need, we are uh, asking uh, uh, each other, or we, we need to answer in, uh, in many stages in uh, the construction project. The combination of BIM and GIS enables the BIM to fuel the GIS and the GIS to empower the BIM. The new GIS BIM integration, or I can say the new GeoBIM model, incorporates additional information from the outdoor environment and enhances the model's detail at the indoor level. So we have uh, a rich model from outdoor and indoor. If you are interested in uh, further uh, details regarding uh, BIM and JS integration, I think you would like to check my LinkedIn article, uh, BIM and JS competition or integration. Additionally, you can uh, read uh, my uh, other article on how to implement the integration in permitting and how can uh, the uh, BIM and GIS uh, integration can be applied in a real world solution like uh, to, to help the municipalities engineers and permitting engineers uh, to use uh, this solution to automate and to be more uh, efficient and to create or to do more uh, efficient permitting process in the article BIMGIS solution for building e-permitting automation. Now we have an accurate digital copy of the structure using BIM and GIS uh, proceeds, and we need to link this to the physical entity. Now we have the physical entity and the, it's accurate as built model and it's accurate digital representation, but it, they are separate. It is IoT time to make this link. IoT or Internet of Things describes uh, physical objects that incorporate sensors, uh, processing capability, software, and other uh, technologies, and that communicate with and exchange data with other devices and system via Internet or other communication networks. Uh, sensors uh, can collect data types, uh, a variety of data types, including lighting, uh, temperature, and even environmental data. Uh, 
uh, as a result of this, you can determine which utility pool requires maintenance or which uh, room is on fire. Everything you can imagine is connected through the internet. So if you are talking in general, to just to deliver the idea, uh, if you are at work and your uh, uh, fridge have uh, has a, a sensor, uh, it, it will send you as an, an SMS uh, telling you that you need to uh, buy some milk because you don't have uh, enough milk in the fridge. That can happen if you if we have IoT sensors. It, the, the sensors that give life for uh, everything because we, now we can communicate with it through the sensors and the internet. Here is a simple uh, example uh, of uh, how uh, can uh, we uh, achieve the digital twin system. It's uh, a digital a digital map, a GIS map that contains a geographic features and the building in its accurate location, the BIM model. Uh, we have a dashboard that contains a multiple uh, data or multiple KPIs from a multiple data sources, some of them from the BIM model, some of them from the GIS model. And we can see on the uh, right panel that we have uh, data from the workforce management system or facility management system, we can, we can say. So the, the, the number of the assigned tasks, the, the number of inspections per room uh, and even the task priority uh, graph. So uh, every piece of information uh, that is related to the project, whatever it's a city, it's uh, a building, uh, it's an infrastructure network, uh, every, every data we need or it's related to the uh, to the, the this this uh, this project, we can uh, compile it or to compile it on one platform. To have, uh, like we say in the uh, BIM, it's a single source uh, of truth, single source of information uh, from for the project for the whole project whatever, it's an engineering information or non-engineering information. Uh, if we play the video, we can see here the danger zones or rooms in danger. So we, we it's it's connected to a, a IoT sensor. Here, we can say it's updated. Uh, so a sensor that give us the feed that here, we have a danger, a room in danger, uh, and its number, its name, and uh, which floor. And also, it can zoom or whatever. You can use the, the routing or the navigation, uh, whatever it's indoor navigation or outdoor navigation capabilities of GIS to do uh, this navigation into the BIM. Whatever it's an an outdoor network like infrastructure networks or uh, uh, between buildings or even uh, in inside the building. Of course, it's not a kitchen; it's just for the example for delivering the message. Okay, so uh, we can think about the digital twin as a concept or other process is it's a digital twinning we we create a digital twin for a certain uh, element whatever it's a city a cup a campus uh, a campus uh, a building or even a small equipment if we uh, need to do this uh, we apply this process at any level of detail from city to equipment using the digital twin enablers, the three main uh, uh, digital twin enablers, BIM, GIS, and IoT. The first step is to create a data repository that contains both 
geographic and uh, text data or non-graphical data. Uh, the second step is to connect it to the uh, tools uh, for uh, real uh, real time data acquisition or uh, to connect it uh, with uh, like an IoT platform like uh, maybe uh, Microsoft Azure using a simple uh, APIs. There is a lot of IoT platform that we can uh, integrate uh, integrate with. Uh, thus, uh, we have a common operating picture or a COP. It's a concept that uh, contain a, a, a lot of information out of KPIs in just one uh, page or one screen to help the decision maker to think or to take decision easily, easier and faster. Uh, a common operating picture uh, for the entire city can reflect the real world uh, in real time, can be uh, used in the third step, which is the data processing or the data ma manipulation, which can take the form of insights dashboards, specialized uh, data analysis, or even predictions using machine learning techniques. So here uh, we have uh, an example for uh, the digital twin workflow, uh, a certain incident that happened. Uh, so uh, the sensor sent us a, a feed about what happened. Of course, some of these uh, situations cannot be, can, cannot be in real time, but it can be covered using the mobile devices we, we, we mentioned. Then. Uh, the field worker can start to move to the incident place uh, to identify uh, what uh, what happened or or even to take uh, uh, an action after the inspection uh, we have enough information to make a work order or to 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 uh, uh, to make a, a, a stronger action to uh, fix or to uh, handle what happened, and uh, in the end, we we need to have a report or an archived data to have uh, the uh, the update of uh, of the site to uh, keep the, the our digital twin or uh, digital uh, archive or digital copy updated. So now we have a digital copy of our city that is connected to its, its physical uh, element, its real world element, starting from planning uh, to, uh, to design. Then we, we go to the building or the construction management uh, and, and execution, then documentation and monitoring and operation for the facility owners and facility managers all in one hub, all in one system. It's an end-to-end -end solution. Digital Twin is a revolution in uh, the uh, digital transformation uh, direction, and especially in our uh, industry. The Digital Twin, uh, exists uh, in the here and now, not in the future. Having uh, complete control over your asset can help uh, saving time, effort, and money. Providing our systems with this level of accuracy can be extremely beneficial for the growth uh, of the uh, entire industry. The digital twin creates an infinite number of opportunities for all stakeholders in construction projects. So the digital twin can, is, is a, we can uh, consider it as a process. Uh, it's digital twinning for building, for an infrastructure, for landscape, contains all its data, whatever it's from ERP system or from workforce management system. We collect the data from mobile devices, uh, from even security cameras, 
and of course the real time data acquisition using the iot uh, sensors and now and that's how we can achieve the concept of digital twin thank you for uh, uh, your patience and your listening to uh, this uh, lecture i hope uh, it was useful uh, useful for you and uh, you 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 found something interesting and you started to believe that digital twin can be applied it's not just a fantasy word uh, for bim or it's uh, like uh, an unapplicable solution that uh, just for uh, uh, tech summits and uh, conferences it's applicable and it's doable and the technology in uh, the, the new technology and of course in uh, integration uh, makes makes it uh, it's here and now I hope uh, we can uh, use it soon in in, in many projects, uh, in more projects. Uh, and of course, uh, if uh, I, I will be happy to answer your questions if uh, if you have uh, any. Uh, thank you uh, very much. Uh, I hope your uh, uh, you, your physical entity. Uh, is good uh, and in peaceful uh, 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 status. <laughs> Thank you so much.